In this video, we're breaking down three adjustments to make you a way better blocker. Let's get into it. First off, I want to give a big shout out to Sava T for the comment asking for a video on blocking and hitting adjustments. This video we're going to focus primarily on blocking adjustments and the reason for that is because Sava himself was one of the best blockers we had in our team last year, if not the best. And I'm going to give you several examples from his gameplay on things that you can do to be a better blocker, simplify your game, and get way more touches on blocks. So here goes nothing. Sava was one of our best blockers last year because he did one thing that most blockers don't do at all. We've had a big pivot and shift in the game recently where if you're on the pins, the expectation is almost to swing block every single time. And that's something that Sava never really did. And I think it was to his benefit. Look at this film right here in a game against Elmira early on in the season. I think this was Sava's first game back. He sees this, this outside ball going out to the lefty right side hitter in row one. So he's on the outside right now. This ball goes out. He takes one step to his right and roofs this ball to the ground. That might just look like a regular roof, regular block, and you may say, okay, what did he do special here? There's one thing that he does better than anyone, and that's shuffling his feet. He gets up to the net, he's looking at the setter, so the order for blocking is ball setter, ball hitter, and he does that better than anyone. He's tracking that ball into the setter's hands, seeing if he needs to help the middle. Once he sees it go to the outside, he takes a big shuffle step to the right, gets in the hitting path of the hitter, puts up a massive block, and roofs that ball to the ground. They don't call him the big bear for nothing. Those paws up over the net, if he's in the right position, good luck trying to hit through him or past him, because he's roofing you almost all the time. But the, but the difference here, the subtle nuance difference is that shuffle step. There's no need for this big, massive switch wing block out to the pin every single time. Now there are certain scenarios where it is necessary, but in this case, you can see the setter, this ball's falling inside. So when you actually watch the ball go into the setter's hand and track that as well as the hitter, you're gonna put yourself in a much better place to actually make a block. It's not a guessing game up there. We're not swinging every time blindly and hoping we get a touch. So that's why I wanna focus more on shuffling versus swinging when we can help it. When we identify that ball's inside, let's focus on shuffle step and get our hands up and over the net. Same game here, another clip, and it's the same exact example, just flipping sides. Another set from their setter, they were in a 6-2. Um, the setter was pretty good, but this ball falls a little inside and Sava is watching and tracking it the whole time, takes that shuffle step and sets up great. When you can, he doesn't have to go all the way to the pin here, that ball's inside. He's still outside of that hitter's hitting arm, creates a shorter distance for that middle to cover and fill that gap. If you hit into that block, rest in peace. So the message here is inside balls, let's shuffle, let's not swing. Swinging is only gonna get you so far on balls that are falling inside. You're typically gonna be too far out where the hitter's gonna be able to swing right past you. That's why I'm a big believer in shuffling when we can help it and swinging when it's absolutely necessary. On to point number two, and this is on general game awareness at the net and seeing what's going on, not only your guy, not only the guy you are responsible for, but also everyone else around you. I think Saba was the best on our team at this last year. He tracked everyone, he saw everything, and this block is the perfect example of that. We're playing at Stevenson. Saba's in, in the setting position here, so he's on the front right. So he's responsible for this outside attacker here, but he sees everything that's going on in this play. He's tracking the fact that this right side hitter is crossing around on a stack, on a front stack behind the middle, which would typically be Devin's ball. But he sees this, identifies this, takes a little step in and gets his hand on this ball. That is one of the best blocking moves you will ever see. This is not his guy. He's not only making a move on a ball for his defender, but he's identifying the fact that this is gonna be a free guy because Kirk is already in the air, he can't get up for it. And if he doesn't make a play, this might be a 10 foot line bounce. 
So what you can do to be like Sava in this situation is track your guy. He sees where his guy is. He has his hand up here, which I think is a great strategy to kind of be aware of your surroundings. But again, he's tracking ball setter, ball hitter, makes a move on it and gets a great touch. We end up siding out on this rally with a, a block from Devin and Kirk. But it's the point of being aware of the situation, being aware of the rest of the hitters on the court, not only your guy. Ultimately, you're responsible for your attacker, but when we can block as a collective versus single blocks, makes it much easier. One more example of Saba's great game awareness. He was always really good on helping in the middle, which when a team is a strong middle, making sure we're trying to get a second pair of hands up there is, is vital. So on this play, he's tracking that ball. He sees the setter goes up with one hand and he's up there with Kirk at the same time, which is the right play because that ball was supposed to go to the middle, even though he doesn't end up getting a touch on this because it's a tip high over the block. It's the fact that he was there and ready and not solely focused on his guy. This rally plays out a little bit. The ball gets pushed out a little inside again, and he does his patented one step right shuffle and another roof. I'm telling you, the shuffle is a great way to get yourself in a position, stay stationary, stay square, and get your hands over where if they tool you, it's gonna have to be a miraculous swing. When we swing, that's when we get our body out of position, that's when we get our shoulders not set, and then we get in a position where it's much easier to, to get tooled. So this is exactly what we're looking for. Penetrated on the outside hitters, hitting shoulder and a great close and finish by Kirk too. And that's, you can't, doesn't get much better than that. All right, one last nugget of advice for you guys. And this is taking blocking one step further. The higher level you get up, the more you practice. This is something you can think about and, and work on implementing in your game. This was our match against Keene University. As you can see, Diego throws the ball over. They were running a 6-2 here and they got a D ball with a one-on-one -on -one option against Devin. So obviously a lot of court for him to cover. He goes up and absolutely roofs this ball to the floor. And you might, you might look at that and see, okay, yeah, great block. What can I take away from it? The takeaway that I have, and one thing that Devin did especially well in comparison to everyone else on the team, was his ability to close his outside foot. Look here, we'll slow it down a little bit. He gets closed. It's really hard to get completely closed, but he does as good of a job as you can, getting his body pretty square to the net. And then his finish is back with his arms into the court. He's trying to take away that angle, trying to take away more space than just going straight up. When you block straight up and just take away your normal positioning, it's easier for that hitter to know where you're at and hit around you. But when you set up one way and kind of make that dive into the court, that's a move that's gonna get you a lot more touches and a lot more blocks like this. And that's something that Devin did the entire year. I think that's one of his, his biggest strengths as a blocker is his ability to adjust in the air and make it difficult for the, sw for the attacker to know where you're set up. So that's a, really, that's a really great play by Devin. Three things to take away from this video, guys. Number one, shuffle when you can. Avoid that swing when it's a ball that's really inside and you know you can get there with just a quick shuffle. It's gonna help out your middle blocker. Number two, have really good game awareness ball setter ball hitter you're not only tracking your guy but you're responsible for helping out in the middle helping out on stacks helping out in the back row we block as a unit and when you do it together it's going to be a lot better for your back row to pick up around those blocks and lastly challenge yourself a little bit up there try and make a little bit of adjustments instead of going straight up every time drop your inside hand a little bit make it a little lower take up a little more space go a little wider clamp in on some balls make some adjustments here and there. Be a little bit more deceptive for the attackers. Don't make it easy on them. Give them something challenging up there to work with, and that's gonna make your game go way up from a blocking standpoint. Thanks for tuning into this video. As always, we got a lot in the queue, a lot of questions, but keep hitting me with those questions in the comments, and I'll see what I can do next. Appreciate y'all, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.